in the aftermath of uh, incredibly shocking experience in the past week, the passing of our brother Thomas, we come to you with a word. I believe it's a timely word I want to share with you. My word is our intimacy, our impossibilities. The impossibilities we face require intimacy. Our intimacy is challenged at this time. Our love relationship with our Lord is challenged at this time. So a week ago we spoke about the reality of the pruning shears. We spoke about John 15 and we spoke about bearing fruit. And, and this week I want to take the same scripture a step further. But I actually want to start reading to you from John 14 verse 11 to 13. So I'm privileged to be in your house this morning. I trust you and your family, you are well. I trust that you need this word to, to touch your lives, where you are finding yourself in your walk with the Lord right now. So let's meditate on the word and let's read from John 14. I read from verse 11. He says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, if you don't believe me for that reason, believe me for the miracles and the works themselves. Truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I do also. And he has a great promise. And he will do even greater works than these because I'm going to be with my Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. We said last week, Jesus seems to focus on the, on the exaltation and the glorification of his Father. So whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the most amazing promise, the most astounding promise. Can I take a step back and, and des describe you in the light of his glorious plan for your and my life? I say royalty is my identity. These words I get from Bill Johnson. Royalty is my identity. I'm a son of the king. Servanthood is my assignment. I read this afternoon, somebody said, nobody's preaching about servanthood anymore. Everybody wants to be a leader. Let me say to you, our assignment is servanthood. Number three, my source is intimacy. Intimacy with my Lord. You see, I am designed to bear fruit. John 15 says, He cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit. To make it be even, even more fruitful. To bear even more excellent fruit. So, so the plan is, he, is, he says that my father is the farmer and I am the vine and you are the branches. You're attached to me. You bear fruit. If you don't bear fruit, I will cast you out. But if you do bear fruit, I will prune you that you bear even better fruit. Whoever lives in me, who, even, who is uh, uh, intertwined with me, and I in him, bears much fruit. See, herein is my Father glorified, he says in, in chapter 14. Now, verse 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed you. Your assignment is that you might go and bear fruit, and keep on bearing, and that your fruit may be lasting. There's a dream in the Father's heart that my fruit, I will bear fruit, and that my fruit will remain, will endure. Now here's something that touches my heart. Intimacy provides spiritual tools. If I'm intertwined and I live in this union with Him, I have spiritual tools. I have access to spiritual assignments. John 15 verse 7, he says, If you live in me, if you abide, meno, meneo is the Greek word, if you abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you, you and me, 
my words in you. I, I, I don't think there's any more intimate uh, 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 relationship than, than that he do, uh, that I dwell in him and his words dwell in me. And you continue to live in your hearts. My words continue to live in your hearts. Ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. He said the same thing in John 14. So he spends two chapters to, to stir a thinking within us of fruit bearing. A possibility that I'm not just existing for myself. A possibility that my life can be fruitful, can resemble his life. Now, now he says, if my words abide in you, let me give you uh, uh, just two scriptures on, on his words. And, and, and you can go and check the Greek there. When he says, my words abide in you, he's, he's talking about reimata from the Greek word reima. Rhema is the reference to living word. Now, let me say this to you. In John 10, 17, Paul comes and he explains to us. He says, faith comes. Faith is not something I pray for. Faith is something I experience. Faith comes because of the living words of Christ. I allow the rhema of Christu, of Christ, to dwell in my life. And if I allow, if I welcome, if I embrace this word, faith is the product of my spirit. I don't have to go to classes to grow my faith. I have to be intimate. And I have to understand that if he speaks a living word to me. Now, John has this experience. I think Paul is referring to this. John lies with his head on the breast of Jesus. And, and, and can you imagine how many whispers of Jesus John heard being so close, being associated in such incredible intimacy with Jesus? And, and, and so, so Paul comes and, he, and he, he, he says, faith comes to me when I'm that intimate with Christ and his words can produce a faith in my spirit. Now, Matthew 4, 4, Jesus made a general, general ruling. He says, I live not by bread alone, but by every word, and again, it's the word rhema, but by every rhema that proceeds from the mouth of my Father or from the mouth of God. My, my life does not only exist in eating bread. My life exists on the, on the reference of, of the word of God, the rhema in my spirit. You see, Jesus is saying his intimacy with the Father is manifested in his, in his actions. And he's, he's luring me. He's inviting me. He's, he's drawing me into this relationship. My works prove my intimacy with him. Verse 11 of John 14, he says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the work's sake. You see, the works that Jesus did proved his intimacy with the Father. I say miracles are a sign of the love of our Father God. Miracles are, are those things that change people's lives. It's, it's a sign of his love for us. His, his love can become visible through me as his love was visible through Jesus. We owe this world signs and wonders. We owe this world miracles. You see, Christianity is so far more than just a philosophy. Christianity is the manifestation of God in our broken world. And you and I play a, 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 an important role. Intimacy has a promise of a greater life. You see, in John 14, 12, Jesus says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly, continues to believe in me he will himself be able to do the things that i do and he will do even greater works because i go to be with my father <laughs> he sits with the father and he tells him corne needs your help my father uh, peter needs your help sandra needs your your works in her life my father intimacy produces greater works Jesus, the, the woman, the woman with, a, with an issue of blood, came to touch the hem of his garment. 
She had to touch the hem of Jesus. Now, now Paul sent some of his clothing, some of the material that he, that he carried on his body, he sent to people that were sick. And, and he sent them to them so that they can be healed. I had to go and touch Jesus. Paul did greater works. He sent his material to heal people in Acts 19 verse 12. In Acts 5 verse 15, we read that Peter did, did even greater works. His shadow fell on people and they were healed. And that, that, that creates such an excitement in me. That, that there's a possibility that now 2,000 years later, you and I can do greater works. Let me say this to you. Let me say this as something from a heart. I have prayed for many people. I've had many more failures than successes. Many more. Here's something I want to leave with you. If I pray for somebody and nothing happens, what do I do? Oh, it's not God's will. Uh, do I philosophize? Uh, no. Jesus prayed for a blind guy. And he asked him, can you see? And he says, yeah, I see men as trees. And Jesus knew that he wasn't perfectly healed. So Jesus prayed again. Let me say this to you. If the Son of God, the one with a mission from heaven, had to pray twice for this blind guy, who am I? To stop after having prayed once. In John 14, 13, Jesus says, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that my Father may be glorified and extolled in the Son. Verse 14, I will grant, I must myself will do for you whatever you ask in my name. Don't, don't give up after one prayer. Don't give up after one effort. But here's what I want to leave with you tonight. Listen to this. I will ask the Father and He will give you another comforter, another helper, a counselor, an intercessor. Actually, the word comforter is not such a good translation. The word is parakletos. Para comes from the word parallel. And kletos comes from kaleo, to call so so jesus is saying i have called somebody else to walk parallel with you my spirit i will give you another parallel helper i'm only one i could be in one place at one time to heal people but now i'm sending out my church he says in, in mark 16 I will send you forth and you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will, you will speak in tongues and, and you will cast out demons. And, and, and my spirit, he's saying in John 14, 16, I will ask the Father, he will give you another parallel walker, an advocate, a strengthener, that he may remain with you forever. And then he says, verse 17, he, did, he explains him to us, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, for it doesn't see him, know him, or recognize him. But you know and recognize him because he's another one. He's like me. He says, for he lives with you and he shall be in you. Wow, what a promise. I'm not only a branch in, 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 the, in the tree, in the vine. I, I'm, I'm not only doing miracles to prove that Jesus is in me. I have God dwelling inside me. And I want to leave this thought with you. You are never alone. I will never leave you. I will never leave you. I will never leave you. Wherever you are, whatever circumstances you find yourself in, He lives with you constantly and He shall be in you. Let me add something. And He is for you. He is for you. He wants to help you. He's been called alongside. May we experience the miracles that this world needs as demonstration of our Father's love. Let me pray with you. My Father, oh, how we long to be those fruit-bearing branches and that our fruit may increase and that we may have more success in 2022 than we had in 2021. That we will have greater breakthroughs. Oh God, here at the end of this year, 
won't you come and make your words real in our spirits? Can I ask you to pray with me? Say, Holy Spirit, come into my house. Oh Lord, come and touch my family. We want to change the world we live in. We want to be your agents of change. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We embrace you because we know that you've come to live inside us. Help us, my Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.